Well, hello, and thank you for joining me uh, today. My name is Mark Roboff, and I chair uh, the Aerospace Standards Development Effort uh, to build what we call a means of compliance for the certification of AI and machine learning in safety critical systems. I do this with SAE International, uh, partnered with EuroK. Uh, I chair SAE G34 slash EuroK Working Group 114. And it's a pleasure to be here today. So what I'm going to talk about is a little bit about our organization, uh, a little bit about our background, and a little bit about uh, what we're doing. Um, and then I'll talk about our roadmap. So what have we released thus far to the industry that illustrates our thinking about the problem of AI certification and what is needed in a new process standard to demonstrate safety assurance with machine learning in safety critical uh, avionics and safety critical ground-based systems. Uh, and then we'll talk about the far future. Uh, what can we imagine a certification environment look like, uh, say 15 or 20 years from now, where certifying systems that could autonomously fly airplanes, both large and small, would be commonplace. So there we are. So SAE G34 and EuroK Working Group 114, which is a joint international committee, merged all operations together. Uh, we created it in January of 2019, uh, and we kicked off in June of 2019, and then EuroK Working Group 114 came in right around that same time. And again, our objective is to, again, establish the common standards, the guidance material, and any related documentation uh, required to support the development and the certification approval of aeronautical safety-related products based on AI technologies. So what does this mean? So in <clears throat> avionics software and in other safety-critical system software, like, for instance, the software on an engine FADAC or the software in air traffic control uh, systems. Uh, in aerospace, there are very stringent uh, and strict safety assurance guidelines that dictate uh, both how you take requirements about your, your system, map them to code, how you write that code, and how you uh, demonstrate to the regulator that that code is performant and that it meets its functional, its safety, uh, and other performance requirements. Um, and the existing what we call process standards that outline today how this is done, that certification authorities across the world recognize as uh, the de facto standards and means in which people can demonstrate their codes correct and thus get certification for the product. Uh, you may have heard of documents like DO 178C, you know, for instance, which handles software certification, or DO 254, uh, which handles hardware certification, or overarching both of those, SAE's ARP 4754, uh, which describes a safety assurance process and means of compliance process for aircraft systems generally. And then if you work in ground-based systems, uh, air traffic control systems, other safety critical systems in aerospace that sit on the ground, there are equivalent existing standards for traditional software and hardware that cover that, such as DO-278. So in essence, what G34 and EuroK Working Group 114 have teamed together to build is the DO-178 for AI and machine learning. Right? It is a process standard for building and running assurance on machine learning code to be put in a safety critical aerospace or aircraft or, or system. Um, and our, we cover both aircraft, airborne systems. So it could be, again, um, predictive maintenance that sits on the airplane. It could be uh, an AI driven a uh, fuel efficiency system or flight path navigator up to, and we can imagine the future, an AI-driven autonomous uh, uh, flight system, right? Uh, and we also cover ground, right? So we think about uh, the what we call the advanced air mobility space, uh, urban air mobility, air taxis flying all over uh, downtown 
um, Los Angeles or Sao Paulo or Mumbai, uh, we can imagine a future in which air traffic control is also going to have to be highly automated. Um, and we can imagine AI and machine learning playing a critical role in the automation of, of those systems. So our committee covers ground as well. It's both uh, airborne and ground, safety critical. How do we build and ultimately certify machine learning to work in those environments? Um, and the way we're organized today <clears throat> is today, uh, first and foremost, we work very, very closely uh, with the regulatory community, with ICAO, with FAA, uh, I, I would argue most uh, importantly today with EASA, European A uh, Aviation Safety Administration. Um, EASA has done, I think, leading work in defining uh, what you know, I, I'd argue it could be a concept of operation. So EASA has done leading work in defining um, how this conceptually fits together, what the, what the gaps and what the problems to solve for are in building a trustworthy, defensible means to certify machine learning. Uh, they have uh, released in 2020 uh, the EASA AI Roadmap, which is a terrific document that really provides a tremendous orientation to the problem space of what we're trying to solve for. And then in subsequent years, they follow that up with different supporting papers, most recently, they've released concept guidance for certification of machine learning that was released last year. Both those two papers, which are free to download off EASA's website, give an outstanding roadmap to what this looks like and how we're solving the problem. And our team's been very deeply involved in, in helping EASA create both of those documents. Um, I'll also point out to AVSI, uh, Aeronautical Vehicle Systems Institute, based at Texas A&M University, uh, has also produced pioneering and I think very orienting report in terms of what this will look like. Uh, Eurocontrol uh, also contributing the Fly AI reports, also terrific. Um, so so these, these documents, all of which you can go and download and read, are um, really, I think, exceptional in defining what problem we're trying to solve and, and can you know, give some insight into how we're trying to solve it. Um, but uh, but uh, you know, critical is is what we've released thus far, uh, which essentially is a call a, a statement of concerns document. Uh, it's it's an AIR or aerospace information uh, report uh, that you can go and buy on SAE's website or uh, on EuroK's website, um, and this is essentially a gap analysis. So you know it takes a common machine learning development methodology and, and uh, looks at applying that machine learning development methodology across existing standards like DO-178, DO-254, uh, 278, um, ARP-4754, and explains why you can't certify machine learning with those standards, uh, and thus sets the, the, the roadmap and the scope for creating new standards that can, that can fit uh, the specific nature of machine learning. Um, and that uh, AIR, that, that gap analysis, uh, was released in, uh, I want to say, late 2020, early 2021. So <clears throat> moving forward, what does the committee look like today? Um, so it's a pretty big affair. We have over 500 engineers from across the aerospace global landscape. We have both uh, major commercial airframers, Airbus and Boeing working with us, as well as Embraer, as well as many of the uh, UAM or AAM uh, uh, airframers like Joby or Lilium or Volocopter. Uh, we also have a great representation from the business and general aviation space with Textron and Gulfstream going further down below. Uh, great representation from all major engine makers, Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, GE, uh, as well as all the avionics and tier one component manufacturers from Collins Aerospace to Talus to Honeywell. Uh, we have great regulatory support. Uh, we have, as I mentioned, IAZA, who we're working very closely with, as well as, of course, the FAA, Transport Canada, uh, Civil Aviation, and ANAC down in Brazil, 
uh, known as the Big Four. Um, we have great support from IKO generally, uh, and uh, also from the defense space as well. We have folks in from Raytheon, folks in from L3 Harris, folks in from BAE. Also, uh, a couple of airlines are there, which is uh, really important. Uh, human computer interaction is a very big piece to this. Uh, so we're pleased to be supportive of folks from Delta, folks from United, uh, Lufthansa. Uh, they, uh, I think we have a couple of Asian-based uh, airlines in as well. Um, and then, and then uh, we have uh, lots of different R and D and, and research firms, both in the civil space uh, and in the military space as well. Um, the way we're organized with all those people coming together, making sure everyone is uh, effectively moving in the same direction is that we organize across essentially today uh, five different subgroups or subcommittees. Um, they've merged a little bit and have spread out a little bit as we develop the, you know, the next standard. Uh, but essentially those five subcommittees or subgroups are uh, based on different processes or different parts of machine learning development lifecycle. So subgroup one is looking at things broadly in terms of use cases to illustrate uh, what are the what are the concerns, what are the the, the steps, uh, what are the things that we need to look out for as we build the standard. Subgroup two uh, and subgroup three, uh, they recently merged, uh, handle data and machine learning algorithms. So they get to the heart of how do you integrate. Uh, an iterative machine learning development lifecycle into more of a classic uh, VNV focused validation and verification focused aerospace systems and uh, item development lifecycle. Uh, and then subgroup four is all about integration. So if you have uh, this machine learning neural net built, then how do you verify the performance of that and integrate it into a classical safety critical aviation architecture? Subgroup five looks at this holistically and, uh, and uh, brings in uh, safety architecture concerns and considerations. So for instance, how do you bound it? Bound performance, bound capability. Um, how do you drive high level from a systems on down standpoint, top down standpoint, uh, safety assurance processes. And then lastly, our SG7 um, really it gets around the process considerations and, and DAL leveling. So DAL is design assurance level. Do we take the design assurance level framework that has been uh, uh, used in the industry over the last 20 years with DO178C? Is that applicable to AI? Or do we need to make any modifications, right? And what do those look like? And that's a, an SG7 standpoint. Now, all of these committees, what they're working towards is the creation of a standard, a process standard for uh, the certification of machine learning. This is called AS6983. As I mentioned, we already had a, a statement of concerns, uh, gap analysis, that's AIR6988. Uh, the flagship uh, document that this committee is working to release, AS6983, that's our first version of the standard. Right. And this is going to be a long, you know, decade, multi-decade process. The first version of the standard uh, is actually now going to be most likely released, not at the end of 2022, uh, but the beginning to middle of 2023. So like all good aerospace programs, uh, we have some slippage here, not a big deal. Um, and that standard will cover air airborne systems and ground-based systems and really focus on uh, what we would look at as, as uh, supervised learning capability. So if you take a more simple uh, supervised learning based machine learning system, what does it mean to put that on an airplane? And what this first standard is really going to do is cover the groundwork in terms of how do you integrate an iterative machine learning development methodology into a broader aerospace systems methodology? How do you do it uh, uh, with common safety assurance processes at the systems level? It creates the foundation to then move forward over future standards uh, to be released in subsequent years that get to uh, more interesting and more complex domains. So. Uh, if we release our V1 standard, 
AS6983 in 2023 than we could expect by 2025, AS6983A, which will bring in things like reinforcement learning and transfer learning and more complex machine learning development like models that get to the integration of, of systems like autonomous flight going well beyond simple systems that the industry is ready to start to certify in the next couple of years. And then if we move further out, toward, say, the end of the decade, we can even imagine adaptive learning, online learning, and then ultimately um, exploring the the modification of the entire certification framework for product uh, and for, say, type certification to fit uh, how you might uh, certify something like an AI autonomous flight system. Um, and again, this is all uh, done in conjunction with the EASA AI Roadmap, <clears throat> which again is our guide map, if you will. And what the EASA AI Roadmap calls for is the first simple machine learned certified component tree to be certified, say in 2025, moving up to more complex systems, including autonomous flight systems, where we can imagine the uh, certification of a system that will enable single pilot operation of an airliner, right? That will be by 2030. And then by 2035, we can imagine getting to zero pilot operation of an airliner, being able to certify, if you will, an AI pilot. So what does that far future look like? Um, What is this, you know, big question of how are we going to certify a computer to fly an airplane, right? There are a couple of things that that I think really get to the heart of what we're trying to do and and really what we're trying to understand, right? First and foremost is I think any of us who work in the industry, in the industry, excuse me, well, no, uh, flying today, especially commercial flying and part 25 aircraft already highly automated. There's a very big difference between automation and autonomy. And that is an ability for a computer system to analyze a dynamically changing environment and then make an executive function decision on how to respond to that environment without pre-programmed instruction, right? To me, I think that's a pretty simple layman's, but all encapsulating encapsulating definition of what AI is all about. Now, think of how we uh, can, can, can build these type of systems today right? If we know anything about AI, um, if we've studied AI and the challenges that come in to certifying AI or demonstrating or proving, really proving uh, that the AI system we build is safe and performant, meets all of our requirements, uh, you may have come across the question of determinism or you know, probably more, more specifically non-determinism, right? Um, this is what we'd call the explainability issue. How do you know the AI system you've built, right, can can do exactly what you expect it to do, especially because unlike traditional software, you can't logically decompose it into uh, lines of source code that you can recognize and logically connect back to your functional and performance and safety requirements, right? That is the explainability you know, problem in a nutshell. And you might think that, uh, you know, to, to get to this far future of fully autonomous flight, we have to solve for the explainability problem, right? I would argue very strongly that perhaps that's not necessarily true, right? That we don't necessarily need to solve the explainability problem. We need to adapt the framework that exists for product certification to meet the nature of AI and to understand that AI and machine learning and deep neural networks in particular, which are at the core of what we're going to be working with in safety critical systems, right? That we're never going to be able to explain them to the way we can explain traditional line by line software, but that we probably don't have to, right? And we can think of this. We can think of the fact that we already certify people and systems and things to fly airplanes today that are equally unexplainable, right? And yet, you know, we all uh, have been living with this for a hundred years. And what is that? How do we certify pilots, 
right? So think about how we certify pilots, human being pilots to fly our airplanes. <clears throat> if we were to certify our pilots, like we certify software, traditional software, right? When we take that pilot out on a flight, we'd be putting diodes up in that pilot's head and measuring the synapses and signals that are coming from that pilot's brain, using that data in some way to judge whether or not the pilot can safely fly his or her airplane, right? Because that is right, really getting to the core of that decomposition for you know, safety assurance, validation, and verification. And of course, we don't do that, right? We don't do that because we have no understanding of how the physical chemical reactions in our brain create our gestalt understanding of our world, right? That is, in essence, the explainability problem. So if we follow this further, right? Well, we have means to certify a pilot. We have a means to judge whether a pilot uh, can safely and competently fly an airplane. Now, how do we do that? Well, we have institutions like ground schools and they have certified curriculums and we'll bring pilots out on airplanes for flight instructions by certified instructors. And then ultimately and critically, we take that pilot out on a check ride, right? And on that check ride, that pilot there is going to be uh, judged as to whether or not he or she can fly that airplane. So we have, we have this framework that doesn't try to explain the logical, you know, systematic functioning of the pilot's brain, right? We can work with how a pilot thinks. We can test whether a pilot has learned and uh, the right information performs the right functions, makes the right decisions in the critical situations uh, that are put together in check rides to say, yes, no, this pilot can fly a plane. So these elements can be applied to AI, right? And we think about, well, how do we certify an AI autonomous system? We can certify a system in the future like we certify a pilot, right? Ground school curriculum for AI. That's why in a lot of ways, EASA and the FAA call it data assurance. How do you know the data you have to train your model is exactly the data you need, right? And that's exactly the core problem that we're working on through a variety of means to come to an answer to today. Then as you build this, uh, this uh, AI system, right, it comes down to, well, how do you, you know, check the performance of said system? And that's very simple. I mean, you have simulators and it's about building the right simulator with robust enough performance characteristics where you can use that simulator as a trusted facsimile for real life, right? So as you imagine testing an AI system out on a simulator, uh, you now have the advantage of computation on your side. So instead of working in real time, where you have about an hour's worth of time to test for very limited number of scenarios as to whether or not a real pilot can fly a real airplane competently. In a simulator, you know, you can run thousands of tests simultaneously uh, in an accelerated time with yet robust results given enough compute power. And here uh, we think about how you cannot simply just uh, drive a, a, a replacement for human, you know, uh, pilots you can think about how you're going to, in doing so, improve the safety element by being able to test for more ground, more edge conditions, uh, more dynamic scenarios, right? And, and I'll close with this. Why is this worthwhile, right? Why are we doing this? Not, it's not just a cost issue. It's not just a scale issue, right? We know that if advanced air mobility is going to ever be real one day. And, you know, some of us may have some doubts. You're going to need AI. You're going to need autonomy to make it work, right? Given the scale that folks are anticipating with advanced air mobility. But beyond all that, there's a core safety element that can be achieved when you can merge the power of critical analysis and decision-making with the speed of computation, right? So in aviation, right, with pilots, and this comes out of the military, there's a very well understood concept called the OODA loop, right? And what the OODA loop is all about is the thought process, pilots and other types of critical combatants in a military campaign go through in 
assessing, analyzing, and ultimately deciding and reacting uh, to their dynamic environment. Uh, and what we can get with a machine learned system is a shrinkage of that OODA loop, a shrinkage of the reaction time. And we think about what that means. And we think about all of the aviation safety incidents that have occurred, at least the vast, vast majority of them, over the last 30 years, you can imagine how AI would have prevented that incident. Anyway, so that is my uh, presentation of SAE G34, your OK Working Group 114. I thank you very, very much. If you're interested in joining, uh, you can reach out to our staff admin, Jordana Buccieri. Uh, at sae.org. You could reach out to myself, my vice chair, Paulo.olivio and Embraer. And uh, again, thank you all for uh, the opportunity to come to speak. I'll turn it over back to our hosts for Q&A.